So you want to laser engrave custom designs, but here's the reality. You're running a one-person operation. You're the graphics designer, the laser operator, the marketing team, the accountant, the fulfillment, and everything else that comes along with creating and fulfilling a product for a customer. And when that custom job only pays you $20 or $30 and takes you several hours to design, you're likely losing money. Now, AI can help fix that problem. And today, I'm going to show you how to build the perfect prompt from scratch, even if you've never touched AI before. So AI image generators like ChatGPT, Midjourney, or Dolly have really changed the game for laser engravers. But here's the problem. Most people throw a vague request at AI and get a gorgeous image that's completely wrong for lasers. And at that point, they tend to just give up. Now, the trick isn't just using AI, it's teaching AI what laser ready actually means. And once you nail that, you've got a reusable template for nearly any project with no more trial and error and no more wasted material and time. Now in the next few minutes, you'll learn what makes an image laser ready, how to ask AI to explain it back to you, how to build a bulletproof prompt, and how to prep your generated image using software such as Lightburn to make it ready for engraving. Now, whether you're engraving coasters, signs, or gifts, this workflow just works. So let's dive in. Before we generate anything, let's figure out what we actually need. And honestly, the best way to do that and the best way to learn is to ask AI itself. So let's open up ChatGPT as an example here, and I'm gonna tell it that I want, uh, I'm gonna laser engrave on wood. What characteristics should an image have to work well? Consider contrast, line quality, and file format. Now, it's going to present me back what details that it feels are necessary for a good laser engraving image on wood. So now I'm going to take this to the next step and I'm going to tell it that um, please use these guides to create a um, concise uh, prompt for AI image generation of vector style line art images. So in this case, I want, you know, I'm looking more, I'm le looking less for photographic, I'm looking more for line art style for the projects that I have in mind. Um, so I'm gonna ask it and sell it that I wanna do, you know, vector style uh, line art images and um, provide placeholders for where I can add my specific project details. And the next thing it's gonna do is it's gonna give me a really you know, concise copy paste ready AI prompt that I can use uh, going forward. And so we're gonna take this and we're going to um, plug it in and see what it returns. So let's actually take this, um, I'm gonna take this real quick and I'm just gonna drop it into like notepad for example and really kind of read through this. So um, insert subject, uh, line art subject here. So I wanna do, um, let's say a um, front three quarter profile um, shot of a Japanese sports car um, taken at a low angle. So let's see, high contrast vector line out of a front three quarter profile shot of a Japanese sports car taken at a low angle, solid black lines and white background, no gradients or color. Um, emphasize bold outlines, close paths, consistent line weight, and suitable for laser engravings. Now should be minimalist, well defined, avoiding sketching or shade effects. Now that we have a prompt that should work, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna plug it into three different image generators, just so I can get some uh, variety and see what the output of each is. So let's start out with chat GPT here. Let's start a new chat and I'm going to paste in my prompt and let that go. In the meantime, I'm going to jump over to Google Gemini. We'll drop the same prompt 
And then we'll go over to Leonardo uh, image generation here and we'll give it a, the same prompt. Uh, now Leonardo, I'm on the free plan. Gemini, I'm on the free plan. Uh, Chat GPT, I am a paid plan, but it shouldn't impact the image that it generates. But let's go ahead and generate that. So now if we go back through, you'll see that Chat GPT and Dolly behind the scenes are kind of still thinking through it. Gemini should have already created something for me, which there you go, it has. Um, so Gemini is actually really fast. It's probably the fastest of the, of the group. Uh, Leonardo, I'm not sure why it's telling me this image might be explicit. Um, okay, so instead of giving me, so Leonardo didn't quite obey the three quarter front shot. I'm not sure why it was telling me the image might be ex, uh, explicit, but um, it does have a, a good look to it. That's kind of an old super look. Um, yeah, kind of, yeah, it's very Toyota centric. That's interesting, even down to the, to the logo there. So, um, okay, so that was Leonardo. Uh, we got something from Gemini and ChatGPT has finished up. Uh, so chat GPT tends to give me with this prompt a little bit more, I don't want to call it coloring book style, but it's more just artist rendering kind of sketchy style. Gemini gives me something a little bit more realistic, um, as if I traced, uh, over an actual image, which, you know, depending on what you're after is kind of a cool look. And, you know, Leonardo uh, is another style altogether. I think with some tweaking, I could get Leonardo to give me a little bit more accurate, you know, the three-quarter in line. Um, but just that kind of gives you an idea of what taking a basic prompt and feeding it in uh, can give you as far as results. Now, here's where things can really get fun. So let's say one of the AI tools, in my case, Gemini, gave me an image that I really like. Um, and uh, I want to enhance this a little bit. Well, I asked Gemini to recreate this and give me more of an automotive illustration, or even I tried to as a um, hand sketched version. And while it did embellish it slightly, um, I don't particularly care for the aesthetic. Uh, so in this case, I actually like chat GPT's ability to go a little bit more down the path of hand drawn. So what I actually did is I copied this image and I came over to ChatGPT and I pasted it in over here and said, using this image, please recreate it in a hand-drawn style while still maintaining all the attributes required for good laser engraving. And the end result is it gave me a hand-sketched image. And this is really cool. And this is kind of something that I had pictured in my head when I wanted hand-sketched. Um, so you can easily mix and match the different AIs. And again, this is all uh, possible on the free plans, you know, Google Gemini's free plan, uh, chat GPT's free plan. The only limitations is you might hit kind of a threshold or a limit for the day and have to wait till tomorrow, uh, to reset your credits. But for the most part, everything I've done here, you can do in the free tiers and in, in a day, no problem. And so that's kind of cool. So let me actually, uh, take the next steps and I'm going to download this image. And to do that, I'm going to come back to the, to here and I'm going to use the download, which will give me the full size. And I'm also going to come over here to Gemini's and I'm going to save the original from here as well. So I've imported the two images into Lightburn. Um, this one is definitely going to stay as an image for raster engraving. There's just too much going on here for me to try and convert this to vector. Uh, whereas over here, um, I can make this vector uh, style by tracing it and make it infinitely resizable. So whether I'm, you know, something as small as a keychain or something as large as a big, you know, wall art sign, um, you know, it'll scale nicely. And because it's all very clean, solid, uh, hard edge black lines, uh, it's very good candidate for tracing in light burn. So in this case, I'm going to do an alt T or I can go up to image trace. And there you go. So I've traced it. And just to show you what my end results are, um, you can see everything traced out into individual lines. Uh, so if I set that to fill, now I have something that I can resize as big as I want. And my quality is going to stay exactly the same. 
So that is, you know, uh, one option. And then from there, I just set my speeds and feeds and, and send it to the laser. Now for this one, I'm actually going to do a little bit of enhancement on first. So I'm going to go to adjust image and I'm going to, I'm going to increase the gamma to make it a little bit darker. And so if I scroll in on that, yeah, so it darkened it up a little bit. And then this is using Jarvis. Uh, you know, you can play around and look at what would uh, stucky or dithered. Um, if you want half tones, you can see kind of what it's doing to, uh, to the image for when it goes to engrave it. So let's go with Jarvis. So I increased the gamma, I cranked the gamma up, and then I uh, made sure we're on Jarvis. And uh, that should do it. So from there, again, it's just a matter of making sure that my uh, settings are good. So let's say I want 300 millimeters per second at 50% power, uh, no air assist for an engraving, and off I go. That's ready to send to the laser as a, uh, as a raster image. So let's recap what you just learned. You asked AI to teach you what laser ready means. You took its response and had it build a reusable prompt template with specific technical requirements. Um, you generated clean, engrave-ready artwork, and you prepped it for uh, burning and you know, hopefully got a perfect result. And this isn't just about one image, it's about building a system. Save your best prompts, experiment with styles, and the more you refine your language, the better your results get, and you'll develop your own style over time uh, based on the prompts that you uh, have saved and built up in your library. Now, if you wanna see more AI workflows for makers, or you've got questions about dialing in your settings, let me know below. And if this saved you hours of design frustration, you know, let me know that too, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Now, get out there and make something cool.